Picasso is a nano-satellite mission initiated by the Belgian Institute for Space Aeronomy, in which also the Royal Observatory of Belgium participates. Picasso is a so-called CubeSat and will fly on the QB50 precursor flight. Picasso will be launched by Stiel-1 rocket. This rocket is actually a decommissioned Russian intercontinental ballistic missile. It is typically launched from a submarine in the frigid waters off the coast of Murmansk into a high inclination orbit at about 500 km altitude. The nose cone of the Stiel rocket contains a CubeSat dispenser. Once the payload fairing has been jettisoned, the dispenser is exposed to space. The dispenser contains a set of boxes from which the CubeSats are deployed through a spring release system once the desired orbit is achieved. Picasso is a 3-unit CubeSat, measuring 30 by 10 by 10 cubic centimeter. Shortly after being released from the dispenser, the CubeSat deploys its antennas. The next step is the deployment of the solar panels. There are four deployable solar panels, each two units large, to ensure adequate power. The spacecraft attitude nominally points the forward face to the sun, so that the solar panels get full exposure. There are also some body-mounted solar cells to allow sufficient energy even when the spacecraft is out of its nominal attitude. Let's have a look at the interior of the spacecraft. The craft is built up from a standardized 3-unit CubeSat frame. It contains the avionics, batteries and controllers for the scientific instruments. Picasso carries three scientific instruments. Two instruments will study the Earth's atmosphere and metosphere, the research domains of the Belgian Institute for Space Aeronomy. A third instrument is contribution by the Royal Observatory. First, there is a spectral imager for the observation of solar occultations by the Earth's atmosphere. This marvel of miniaturization is built by VTT, a Finnish institute. The imager always points to the sun. 
It has a field of view of 2.5 degrees and as the solar disk is half a degree wide this allows some margin on the pointing accuracy. There is typically one sunrise and one sunset per orbit. These can be quite spectacular as in this view from the Space Shuttle flight deck. The imager observes solar occultations in the so-called Chapuis band, where ozone is responsible for strong absorption. In this way, the imager obtains vertical profiles of ozone in the upper atmosphere. Picasso's orbit allows for a fairly global coverage of the atmosphere. Because of the limited telemetry bandwidth, one would rarely downlink a solar image. Instead, only the intensities across the spectral band as a function of time are transmitted. The second instrument is a multi-needle Langmuir probe, developed in collaboration with the University of Oslo in Norway. The aim of this instrument is to measure the electron density at Picasso's altitude. 500 km above the Earth's surface, Picasso orbits in the high ionosphere, a region where the atmosphere is partially ionized by solar ultraviolet radiation and by the impact of magnetospheric particles. A thin, cylindrical, needle-like probe is mounted on a small boom on each of the deployed solar panels. Each of the four probes is brought to a different electric potential relative to the spacecraft body and collects electrons from the immediate vicinity of the spacecraft. From the current voltage relationship that can be measured in this way, one can derive the electron density in the surrounding medium. This only works, however, if the spacecraft's outer surface is large and electrically conducting. As a CubeSat simply is too small, one operates an electron emitter situated below the square hole at the back end of the spacecraft. An onboard control loop keeps the spacecraft potential close to zero by intermittently firing electrons into the spacecraft environment. Because of the high inclination orbit, Picasso also crosses the auroral regions and spends some time above the polar caps. That should be interesting for studying auroral arcs and black aurora. Aurora are magnetic field-lined curtains created by the impact of magnetospheric electrons on the ionosphere. They produce variations in the ionospheric charge density which the Langmuir probes readily detect. Aurora at this altitude are regularly observed by the astronauts aboard the International Space Station. Capitalizing on the scientific opportunities offered by this instrument, Picasso operations will be coordinated with the activities of the ISCAT radars in northern Scandinavia. For instance, the electron densities obtained from these ionospheric radars can be calibrated against Picasso's in situ measurements. The third instrument is a set of microbolometer sensors on each side of the spacecraft. These can measure tiny fluctuations in temperature on the spacecraft exterior. And from that, it is possible to extract information about the Sun's and the Earth's radiation output. That is relevant for studies of global warming and the greenhouse effect. Picasso is a small spacecraft, but by focusing its performance on very specific targets, it has a strong science potential. <laughs> 